came there a certain lord, neat and trimly dressed, fresh as a bridegroom, and his chin, new reaped, showed like a stubble land at harvest home. He was perfumed like a milliner, and twixt his finger and his thumb he held a pouncet box, which ever and anon he gave his nose and took to again, who therewith angry, when it next came there, took it in snuff. And still he smiled and talked, and as the soldiers bore dead bodies by, he called them untaught knaves, unmannerly, to bring a slovenly, unhandsome course betwixt the wind and his nobility. With many holiday and lady term, he questioned me, among the rest, demanded my prisoners in your majesty's behalf. I then, all smartened with my wounds being called to be so pestered with a popinjay, out of my grief and my impatience, answered neglectingly, I know not what, he should or he should not, that he made me mad to see him shine so brisk and smell so sweet and talk so like a waiting gentlewoman of guns and drums and wounds. God save the mark. Somehow we'd all arrive there in just the right time in a way that still felt like magic in all of us. And us three, and the Niven two and Emma will be so terribly delighted. You're here. How come you're here? And our parents would wink and shrug their shoulders, pinch our cheeks and ruffle our hair. And then they'd lay out on the bank with their hampers and their backs to us. And we would climb into that river and swim and dive and loll about our boat. Mrs. Niven. Oh, dear Mrs. Niven. She'd wade into the water with us. I mean, my lot would be stretched out, eating lobster, drinking champagne. And she'd, Lady Niven would race us across the water like an Oxford scholar, like a goddess. She'd beat us all every time. The others all got too old for it, of course. <laughs> Freddie and Dick would bike over to see Philip, and uh, James had his head in books. And books and books and books and books. Till he met Emma, of course, and I just wanted everyone to keep playing. 